In this video I'll show you how to safely reduce the size of your libraries in Final Cut Pro 10 in seconds so you can save a lot of hard drive space on your computer so don't go away. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Mike and part of this channel is about tech tips including Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials just like this one so if you're new here consider subscribing. If you edit on Final Cut Pro, you've probably noticed that it doesn't take long before your hard drive can get filled up really fast by large libraries. Depending on the size of your project, it can easily blow out to tens of gigabytes. A lot of this is due to render files that are created as you edit. Also, if you've been editing a project for a long time, sometimes chipping away at it over days or even weeks, the library file can blow out much more. I've had library files get to over 100 gigabytes. This clogs up your hard drive and also creates a problem when you want to archive the project. In this video, I'll show you how to reduce the size of your library files dramatically. The process I'm about to show you I do religiously before I archive a project and it works so well. It has saved me heaps of space and time. And make sure you stick around till the end of the video because I'll share with you why it's a super safe method and how it can help you out down the line. So let's get into it. Okay so I've opened up one of my projects and if we click on the library file at the top of the browser and we can look across here and we can see that the size of this library is 30.8 getting old need new glasses we can see the size of this library is 30.6 gigabytes so that is pretty sizable now when you make changes to your edit Final Cut Pro renders the files in the background and these render files accumulate making that library bigger and bigger and bigger this tends to happen if you edit a project over a long period of time and you keep chipping away at it, you keep coming back and doing a little bit more, or you've got lots of media like you can see in, in here, I've got lots of media, or you've added lots of effects. So yeah, 30.6 is reasonably sizable. I have had them over 100. Now this causes a problem if you don't have that much hard drive space because it clogs up your system and it slows everything down. But if you're also going to archive your library in an external drive, it means you're going to fill up that drive fast, plus it'll take longer to transfer the library to that drive because it's such a big file. So let's say you've finished your, let's say you've finished your project, you've exported your final videos, um, you're ready to shut down your library and store it on an external drive. Now is the time to get rid of any unnecessary files. So to do that, we'll go up, make sure our library's selected, click on File, and go to, down here to see delete generated library files. Now as I said before, every time you make changes to your edit, Final Cut Pro renders in the background and creates more and more render files. So all we're going to do here is actually delete those render files. You don't need them anymore because you've exported your project. So we'll click on that. Then this box turns up. What we want to select is delete render files and delete all. And then OK. And it's done. Go back up to your project click away on something else, click back to your library, then look across here, and in this case it's down to 15 gigabytes, so drastically reduced. Hey guys, I'm just editing this video and I found a better example. The library that I used went from 30 to 15, which was good, but it wasn't great. And I think that's because I hadn't done a lot of editing on that project in quite a while and I'd already deleted a whole lot of the render files. So there wasn't that many left to delete. But I found another example that I'll show you on another project that I've got. And this is um, about 39, 40 gigabytes. And when we go in and delete the generated library files, delete render files, click all, and OK. Then we go back over to our library, click on something else, click back to the library. We can see it's reduced down to four and a half gigabytes, which is considerably less than um, the last example. And this is typically what you'll see when you do do this process. So I think that's a much better example and it's much more typical of what you're likely to see when you do it yourself. You can now go up, close that library and store it on an external drive. Now I've made a video on how to do that and keep all your files nice and neat and together on an external drive and I'll link that in the description below. Now, why is this a super safe method and it can help you out down the line? It's super safe because all you did was delete render files. You didn't delete any other information, no media, no clips, nothing. It's a totally safe way to save space because if you need to open the library again, you can and Final Cut Pro will re-render the project automatically. 
Now this happened to me a couple of weeks ago. I'd exported the video, deleted the render files and archived the library. But before I published the video, I realized I had missed a very important part in the edit. So I needed to reopen the library and make changes to the edit. So I did just that. Reopened the library, made the changes, Final Cut Pro re-rendered the project, I exported it again, and all was right with the world. So there you go, a super easy and safe way to reduce the size of your library files. I now do this with every project I work on, and it has saved me so much space and time. If you got value from the video, please hit the like button, and if you want to see more of this type of content, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.